everybody, I am Ace Creeper and today I'm back with a brand new Doctor Who classic series review. It's been a while, we're going to do a whole series at once, a uh, whole classic season, sorry. We started with season 26, we did uh, Ghostlight, we did Battlefield and we never continued, we never got to Curse of Fenric and no one really asked why because it probably just assumed that I wasn't doing it, but I am, we're getting there and we got there eventually. So here we are today with my review of the Curse of Fenric. So the story of Curse of Fenric, what is it about? World War II, a naval base, an ancient mystery. You've got mathematicians and soldiers working to find out and break down the German codes. It's a very famous stuff that was happening in wartime. It's a very famous scenario, lots of different places happening over the UK, lots of different things happening. But this specific naval base has a mathematician who is also secretly sort of looking into some ancient scriptures underneath a church which perhaps lead to some sort of ancient mystery of sorts eventually unveiling uh, this sort of ancient being uh, when they are translated so yes exciting stuff overall thoughts on the story we're not going to break it down into the first act second act thing i just want to go right in with the story what do i think of it I think it's really good. I think this is top tier Doctor Who. It's really genuinely entertaining. It's got a lot of interesting story points, bits and bats here and there. It just, it works. You've got a perfect balance of different themes. You've got ancient gods and old Doctor Who trope, but again, done very well here. Reflecting on stuff that the Doctor's done in the past, for example, trapping Fenric in this sort of ancient seal. That was the Doctor's fault, so it's the Doctor having revenge taken out on him. I like that sort of stuff. Zombie-like creatures. I'm a big zombie fan, so I do like seeing the uh, the monsters of this story sort of knocking about, basically almost infecting people, taking people away. It was kind of fun, because it did feel a bit like a Doctor Who zombie episode, which we haven't really had I didn't think, anyway, until I watched this. There's also big reveals, emotional moments. It genuinely feels like just top-tier Doctor Who. It's got everything. If you're a fan of Doctor Who and there's something specific you're looking for from all Doctor Who tropes, unless you're looking for Daleks or Cybermen, it's here. It's in Curse of Fenric, and it's just a very, very good story. And I'm surprised I haven't heard more about it, considering how good I thought it was. Sure, there's a few bits that are drawn out. You know, the story isn't perfect. It's not the most rewatchable Doctor Who story, and it's certainly not my favourite classic story of all time uh, as of yet. But it's up there. It's pretty good. It's It's got a lot going for it. And again, I'm just surprised I hadn't heard more about it going into it, because... I knew nothing. And you know, you hear stuff. Like when I watched Genesis of the Daleks, I knew exactly what that was. I knew exactly what I was going into. Different things. Revenge of the Cybermen, Sontaran Experiment, you know, even Battlefield with the Brigadier and, you know, Bessie and all that sort of stuff. There's loads of stuff you know about certain stories. Survival, I knew a lot about that going in. This, I knew next to nothing. So I just assumed it would be sort of a basic Doctor Who story that just doesn't really get talked about. But it was brilliant. It was genuinely up there as one of my favourites. And I'm just surprised is all. Let's talk about characters, starting of course with the Doctor as played by Sylvester McCoy. Uh, a brilliant, brilliant variant of the character. I do love the Seventh Doctor and as I said towards my Battlefield review, both the Doctor and Ace get more enjoyable as the series goes on. It feels like they have more to do, more to their characters. Battlefield, they were there but didn't really do as much as a sort of Doctor and Companion duo, but in this story, Oh my god. The Doctor's so heavily involved, it just, it wraps around everything. As I said, it really, it's with the Doctor's history. You have moments, basically, are very, which are very intimidating. There's a fantastic moment towards the end where the Doctor sort of bluffs towards Ace about thinking she's, like, thick, stupid, and just not worth anything. The only reason she's, uh, the only reason he's travelling with her is because of this sort of, like, underlying plot. And it was this whole expansive sort of lie, which I really liked. It reminded me of the God Complex uh, in Series 6, which is one of my favourite episodes of New Who. Um, and you've got the Doctor basically telling Amy, like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not responsible, I'm not whatever, like, I'm not this person you think I am, you know. I failed you, you know, you shouldn't believe in me, you shouldn't give me any hope. And it's a sort of similar sort of thing. Very different scenarios, very different cases, very different things said. This was certainly more brutal than the God Complex. But I like the sort of recurring theme there. I know this came out before God Complex, I'm not stupid, but I like, you know, I think I'll appreciate the God Complex more by going, ah, that could be a sort of moderate nod back to the Curse of Fenric. The Doctor has a lot of history with uh, the character of Fenric, which makes it a lot more interesting as a villain, um, because even though I haven't seen him on screen before, I don't know if you do see him on screen in the previous Classic Who, I don't know whether this is like a conclusion to a part, you know, like how um, Remembrance of the Daleks is like the end of like an arc. I don't know if this is, I presume it isn't. So even still, it's like getting a villain who is already intimidating, already a bit creepy and a bit scary and going, here's some history. And then that just makes everything more interesting, not just with the villain, but with the Doctor himself as well. Talking about Ace, of course, um, fantastic in this story. I love what they do with Ace in this story. A lot of different things that are revealed, a lot of things that are done. 
put forward, etc. I really like what they did with Sophie Aldred's character here because it gives her more space to do things, it gives her more room to breathe, and it makes her feel more like a modern Doctor Who companion. And a lot of people do go on record saying that Ace is basically the template for the modern Who Doctor Who companion. Just stories involving around them, their history being wound up in the Doctors, and just little things, making the companions feel more important and not just the person to ask questions. You know, when you look at season 12, which I really, really did enjoy with Sarah Jane Smith, a lot of it's just Sarah Jane having a few moments talking about, but I don't feel like I know anything about Sarah Jane's history or her past or anything like that. With Ace, it's like so drawn up. And we'll talk about the big reveal towards the end of the story in my best bit of this episode, because I actually really, really loved uh, that segment. But um, as for now, yes, Ace was brilliant in this story. I really, really enjoyed Sophie Aldra's performance. She did a brilliant job, and the script absolutely did her a lot of favours. Next, we've got the Hemovore, or the Hemovore. I don't know how to pronounce it. I've totally forgot because it's been so long since I actually watched this story originally. But the zombie-like blue creatures that come from the water, all possessed by Fenric. I absolutely adore these monsters. They were so cool. I really loved them. And, you know, a lot of people may criticise this, but this feels like modern Who. Update the camera and microphone quality and it's basically new Who, and that's kind of what I like about it. I was kind of surprised because when you say classic Who, you expect it to all be very, you know, following the same suit. This feels like new Who, and that, coming from someone who was brought up on new Who, is definitely a compliment. It was definitely very exciting to see monsters that were genuinely scary that you could see with, you know, Jodie Whittaker now. I could see, like, obviously maybe not bring Fenric back, but, like, you could have done something with that. You could have done something with these monsters. I'm a killer for a zombie apocalypse film, you know? I really like those sorts of films, so I like seeing a sort of invasion of these all similar looking monsters slowly picking people off, you know, the soldiers trying to fight against them, the whole segment through the sort of caves thing and they come out and they have to like shut the door on them. It's like, it's scary. It's a mix between vampires and zombies, I think, you know, especially with the, the women with the sort of long nails and stuff trying to take the priest. It was very, um, I don't know, I guess very Salem's Lot, very sort of traditional vampire type storytelling, as well as incorporating that zombie feel. So yeah, for traditional horror fans, definitely a Doctor Who story for you. It was one that I thoroughly enjoyed and did not expect the villains to be like that at all. Talking about Fenric, the big bad, the big ancient monster of this story. Again, very interesting and compelling character. We've already talked about him a little bit, but I like when the villain actually is connected with the Doctor in some way. They know the Doctor, the Doctor knows them, and there is history. Even if we don't know what the history is. You know, that's how they introduced the Master. Of course, the Master's been in loads of Doctor Who stories now, but when we first saw the Master in Terror of the Autons, he was just a character. He knew who the Doctor was. The Doctor knew who he was, and that was that. That was the Master. I like the fact that they did that sim sort of similar thing with Fenric. They brought him on screen. The Doctor knows this person. This person knows the Doctor. They are a big bad. They are powerful. They do all this sort of stuff, etc. Now, yes, he does, I presume, get killed off at the end of the story. I couldn't really work out whether he did or not. I guess that's what happened. If not, then, hey, I would not mind seeing this character back. It was interesting. It was that sort of ancient gods type thing. Now, I haven't watched a lot of the Fifth Doctor's era. I know there's a lot of Eternals and gods and stuff in the fifth Doctor's era, so I will have to get around to that eventually. But I would have loved to have seen Fenric in like Can You Hear Me or even referenced in Can You Hear Me. I know he's not a god or an ancient one or anything like that, but he's kind of cool. He's kind of a cool villain and this sort of like chess game thing. Again, you get a lot of vibes when you watch New Who after Classic Who and realize how much is influenced. Now, I grew up on New Who, so I'm watching it in sort of in the wrong order, if you will, but seeing the stuff like the little chess game is like. That's a bit Nightmare in Silver, isn't it? Like a little bit, just a little bit here and there. I don't know whether it was intentional for Nightmare in Silver or the God Complex to take little bits of this. They might, the, the writers of that story may not have even seen this story, but it makes the enjoy, you know, it makes the sort of lesser New Who episodes more enjoyable when you compare it to what it might be taking inspiration from in regards to this, which is a brilliant Doctor Who classic story. The soldiers were fine characters, they were just enjoyable, they were fine, they didn't really do much, but when they did do stuff it was fine. They were emotional, they had character. Remembrance of the Daleks, one of my biggest criticisms, that a lot of the side characters I can barely just remember, they all just sort of wash away. Even the guy who's supposed to be a villain, the two-faced unit soldier or whatever in, in Remembrance of the Daleks, like, I just totally forget about him sometimes, and it's like, he's like one of the main villains, isn't he? He's meant to be like the big reveal, oh, he's an evil guy, he's like, is he? I don't know. Like, I, remember, I love Remembrance, but I like the fact that the soldiers in this actually felt like they had more personality. There was a connection between one of them and Ace, they gave Ace a little uh, communist badge thing, I think, and that was brilliant, it was nice, <laughs> nice and fun. But yeah, no, I think it's, 
is quite enjoyable and I really like that aspect of it. In terms of best bits of the story, I've got two big things that point out to me. Uh, one is the Doctor's history. Again, I absolutely love the way that the Doctor and Fenric play off each other. There is history there, there is power there, there is struggles there, and I actually really like that aspect of this story. It made it more interesting, it made it more compelling, and I just found more enjoyment out of that than I do from the usual sort of Doctor Who stuff. Like, Battlefield tried to do, ooh, the Doctor's been involved with this, but in that case, the Doctor wasn't aware that he was involved with this, so it just looked like people who were just mistaking him for someone else. And even though it was, I just, it was, it was weird, Battlefield, and this is just a better story, really, if I'm being honest. And yeah, I think that story point was very interesting, and I like what they did there. The other one, of course, the big elephant in the room, is Ace and Hereditary. That is an important theme of this story. There's a lot of reference to um, Ace and her connection with her parents, specifically her mother, who she doesn't have a good connection with at all. And I really like to see the fact that that's explored. Not only having um, a segment where, oh, there's a baby in this, there's a baby and a mother involved, and she's looking after this baby and mother because she, you know, it's sort of like connecting with her past. You know, she's not got a very good connection with her mother, but she's still helping out this other mother and helping her survive so she can bring up her daughter. Her daughter happens to have the same name as Ace's mum, which Ace is like, oh, that's a bit weird. She gets a little bit like, oh, oh no, I'll put the baby back, thanks, no thank you. And then, but obviously they have a connection towards the end of the episode. And then it's revealed that the baby actually is Ace's mom. And it's like, oh, right, that's, that's incredible. So this woman you've been working with the whole time was actually like your grandmother or something. It's just a lot to take in, but I liked it. It was a reveal that I thought I was, it's one of those ones where I was sitting there thinking it would be really, really cool if they did this. Are they going to do it? Probably not. And they did. And I was like, oh, wow, actually, this this story has gone up in my estimations. Very nicely done. Very well pulled off. It was just good. It was just good storytelling, good Doctor Who, good drama. You know, you feel for the companion, you feel for the Doctor, you feel for the characters involved. There's emotion, there's impact, there's actual stakes, and it feels good to watch Doctor Who with that. So overall, um, you may have seen, I'm not giving many criticisms, there are a few slow points for me, not my favourite story of all time, so I'm not going to bump it all the way up, but I will say this does get a 9 out of 10 for me. It is fantastic, uh, in the words of the Ninth Doctor. Genuinely, I absolutely loved a lot of this. Yes, it's not the most rewatchable, yes, it does drag in places, but it's bloody brilliant, isn't it? It is really good, and it has a lot of themes that I quite enjoy, and a lot of surprises as well. And when Classic Who does surprise me, and isn't totally predictable, that's always fun. That is always fun. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, I will see you very shortly with Survival, uh, my last review of this season. I might do more classic reviews in the future. We'll see how it goes. We'll see if you guys enjoy them, etc, etc, etc. I don't know how you guys will see them yet, so we'll have to wait and see. But yes, thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment below for any more suggestions for classic reviews in the future. Subscribe with notifications on if you haven't already. We've got a Patreon page if you want to support the channel, um, get early access content, Discord server, name in my description, etc. I've also got Twitter and Instagram if you want to stay up to date with the latest news, reviews, all that sort of stuff. Um, I've got a lot of stuff going on in life at the moment. I put a lot of updates on Twitter, so if you want to sort of keep up to date with that and know what's happening with videos, etc, 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 that is the place to go. So, yes, thank you all so much for the support on the recent videos, really much appreciated, and I will see you soon next week with a live stream and a bit of a different video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.